Welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look into a use case for a screen validation where we are going to validate one field based on combination of different fields within the screen flow. And I'm also going to touch over the basic concepts around writing a validation rule inside a flow and how is it different from regular validation rules that you create within Salesforce. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm going to show you the end result. So, so we're going to work backward from it and kind of understand the concept behind the validation as well. So let me just show you what I've built and what is the validation we're trying to build. And you can recreate this inside your org um, because I'm not using any fields. So you can just create text inputs and build this. So I'm just going to run this. We're going to ignore this first screen, but go jump into the second screen, which is a simpler version. So here is the requirement. I do not want to fire any validation until some other fields are selected. So basically my validation is going to be around our X outside here, this, this field right here, but I don't want to fire it without anything else being selected. So if I just go in and hit next, nothing is going to fire. This is what I want. But let's say if I put here standard and if I select a pick list value test one, and if I just say 50, then it should fire a validation. And basically the reason it's firing is because I have a very specific requirement that they need to put this in a certain type. So my type right now is it needs to be the 50% or a thousand dollar so if i put percent then hopefully it should not fire the rule and that is good to go now if i go back and if i remove everything from here and delete this then also it should not fire if i just put 50 percent and not add anything else then we are good to go so as you can see we are building logic based on other fields that user is inputting and these are by the way not fields i just created some inputs within the screen just to show you an example but this can also work for if you are bringing in fields from Salesforce as well. Now let's take a look at the flow itself first. So we're going to ignore this first one, just focusing on the second element uh, or screen. So these are the three fields just to show you from the background. We have a text field, we have a pick list field, and this is the field. It is also a text, but I am making them add certain values. It should be a dollar symbol, thousand or 50%. So that is my requirement. Now, how is this different from validation rule? So in validation rule, you always try to put the rule, which is the opposite of what you want it to be so that the error will fire. For example, if I want the user to put 50%, then my validation will say, um, Rx outside tier is not equal to 50%. So what's going to happen is if the user does not put 50%, you get the error. But in this case, in the flow, flow validation, the it's actually exactly the reverse. So if you want the users to put 50%, that is what you're going to put in your validation uh, formula. So, so validation is composed of two elements. One is error message and the other is the actual formula. And I highly recommend to use a text editor. You can install Visual Studio or some sort of, or even Notepad++ to use that to build your formula. Otherwise it gets really tricky to like navigate here and it's just lots of scrolling and you end up making a lot of mistakes with commas and brackets and things like that. So as you can see here, I used exactly what I want user to enter. So what is true requirement? That's what you put it here. So. If, they, if you want the user to enter 50%, you have to put that here. It's not not equal to. So just the, uh, some conceptual difference between validation rule and the flow validation. Um, so another thing, and I'm going to copy this whole thing into an online editor for simplicity so that we can all look at the formula. Before we even write the formula, let's look at what is the expectation for this formula. This formula actually needs to return true or false. It's in the documentation, which I'll share the link for. But basically, this formula is expecting either true or false value. If the value returns to be true, then the user is good to go and it does not throw an error. If the value is false, that's when you will get the error based on what you put in your error message. So once you have that concept, so it's true or false. False means you get an error. True means you don't get an error.
And once you understand this concept, it's really powerful to build the formula that you need. Now in this case, because my requirement was not just simple um, one field. So let's say if my requirement was only this much, if I just wanted to have this one. And I do have a very basic video as well. If you want to figure out how to write this formula, it's basically just flow field. So if you start typing your formula in here, you can just insert resource and you can pick all these values and it will automatically populate the actual formula for you. That's the syntax or API name. So let's say if this was the only requirement for me based on that exact field where I'm firing the error message. So Rx outset here is my field and that's what I want to fire the error message. So I want this thing to return true for the user to be able to succeed. And if this is not successful, then it will return false and that's when they will get error. Now this is pretty good. I can just say or if any of these requirements are met, then it's good. Now, what if your business wants this formula to be based on something else? So uh, outside here is fine. This is just based on one field. So you can easily return either and or or to return true or false. And that solves your issue. But what if you it's based on different fields? That's when you have to get a little bit of creative. Here I used an if because I know that if can return true or false. So just for a refresher, if maybe there will be condition. And if that condition is met, do this. And it can be anything it can be I can say make it true or false or anything I want because in this case the return requirement is true or false I'm just putting true or false here but it can be anything do this otherwise do this so that's basically the if um, format and in this case what I'm doing is I'm saying okay if you have input text is standard or enhanced so that's one and pick list value is test one. So that is my uh, first condition that only if this happens, fire this validation rule basically. So if this happens, then only check for Rx outside tier value. So now this is my do this condition. Okay. And then if it doesn't happen, so if they don't select any of these, then just make the formula to true, which means don't validate anything because it is true. So let's let them pass through. And that, that is the concept. Once you understand this part, you can do, make the formula do anything to return true or false. And that's how you can actually do it. It could be anything else. If they want more conditions, you can add more conditions underneath here and then make it true or false like that. So I hope this makes sense. Try this out on your own. And sometimes formula is really easier once you actually do it yourself. So, and just make sure of the brackets that you're using. And so that is pretty much the concept around building logical formula um, validation rules based on other fields. Hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. I'll share this code with you. And basically just to recap, the screen flow is just three text here, three text, um, two text and one pick list value. So you can build this out yourself and try it out.